Hey, what's up, everybody? Let's learn something new. Today, we're gonna be learning how to create an 80s filter in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's jump right in and let's get started. So we're creating this effect. If you notice at the beginning, we have a very vivid, clear image, and that's just not conducive to what the 80s typical cameras were like. So we're gonna be trying to recreate that slightly softer, more, sort of destroyed footage. And to do that, we're not going over the top on this. We're going just enough to make it feel like it where it's passable. And I think that creates a really fun effect. So let's get started on this. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're just gonna create ourselves an adjustment layer. So we can click new, okay, and then drag the adjustment layer on. And I'm gonna make sure, yep, that's hidden. And we wanna start off over here in the Lumetri color. So if we go to window and then down to Lumetri color, we can then have it set up over here and begin our effects. So with an older camera, a lot of them had trouble figuring out the proper temperature and tint. So they were usually skewed one way or the other. I like to grab the tint and the temperature and bring them more to that magenta and orange area. And that's gonna create sort of that off-centered feeling where it feels like it's, it's footage that wasn't properly exposed and it wasn't properly color corrected. We're then gonna go down here and we're gonna drop that contrast down Really high poppy contrast is a, a much newer processor thing. So we wanna make sure that we, we aren't putting that in. We're reducing it and making it feel a little more realistic. And then we can adjust all these, you know, to how they feel. I like to, again, lean on the side of making those contrasts come down because the, the, the older footage was a lot more condensed, a lot less pulling apart with the colors and the contrast. In the creative tab, we're gonna grab this faded film and throw that on. This is a great sort of all-in-one effect that does make it look like an older sort of feeling. We then wanna to go to this vibrance and I like to increase the vibrance here and then decrease the saturation. And why would we do that? Well, the older cameras, a lot of times they had trouble picking up the colors that were very similar in the color range. So they would kind of condense those colors together. Well, anything that was vibrant and poppy, that would make sure to be, it would stay as that color. So by doing this, we're mimicking that experience where these dark blues and these bright yellows kind of stay in their poppiness, but the other colors like the orange, the different shades of orange here kind of stay very so, uh, similar to one another. In the curves, we can also adjust a little bit. We can grab the red and sort of throw it off center a little, grab the green and do the same. And you can create different little effects like this. Just again, we're trying to throw that color balance off just enough, but in an artistic way. Now that our Lumetri color is done, we kind of have a good feeling right here on this. Let's go ahead and start degrading the footage with our effects. The first one we want to do is a very simple one. It is noise. We want to add a little bit of noise, especially in really dark locations like an arcade, there would have been a lot of noise on the camera. So if we grab this and we go to amount of noise, we're going to drag this up. We, I always like to start at the most advanced value and then kind of bring it down to feel where it works. So maybe around 25%. Make it big just to see how it's going to play out. And I do enjoy that. I think that looks really good right there. It's got a good amount of noise, but it isn't overpowering. We then want to look for an effect called mosaic. And this is a fun stylized effect where you can see that's going to take the number of pixels we have and then reduce them. So it's basically going to find the average of colors in here and only represent that color in here. Now, with this, we need to make sure we understand what size of our footage is. So if we go to sequence, sequence settings, we can see we have a typical 1080p piece here, 1920 by 1080. The reason that's important is because if we expand past those numbers, so if we grab these and expand past those numbers, you're going to notice that nothing happens at all. If you look at his shoulder, it's still nice and uh, symmetrical and everything is nice and smooth around here. So what we want to do is we want to grab these vertical blocks and sort of just drag them really high. We don't want to affect that area. We're then going to go to the horizontal blocks and we're going to drag them down to maybe near the 400 range. And you're going to start to see if we go all the way over to zero, you're going to see the kind of effect we're creating. We're adding in these sort of lines across the, the sensor that might have been more realistic to a camera back in the 80s. And so now if we take a look, you can see that we have that pixelation happening all around. It doesn't destroy the footage. It doesn't make it like really, really bad sort of, uh, you know, low quality footage, but it does add a nice effect where it kind of looks older um, and more like, you know, with a lesser camera. And so that's looking pretty good now. The next effect that we want to go ahead and add in here is a little bit of blur. So we want to go into our Gaussian blur and we want to drag and drop that onto the adjustment layer. 
And then we wanna just increase it, not too much, like five or six, and this will just take off any of the sharp edges that a modern camera is so easily able to create. And so now we have this degraded footage, but it's looking really good. And if you see, this was sort of the original footage, and then this is what we've added on. And overall, I'm liking the effect. Now, the last thing I like to try to simulate is older lenses, older cameras, they didn't process the outside edges very well. The center was usually pretty okay, but the outside started to distort and feel a little off. And we can mimic that by going into Lumetri Color and hitting Control C or V or Command C and V, and that's gonna duplicate it. We're then going to click this circle right here to create a mask, and we want to invert that mask, and then we're gonna drag this expansion up to something crazy, like in the 400s. And then we're gonna drag the feather up as well, something also crazy. And then we can take this mask feathering and or this mask opacity and bring it down. And you're gonna notice that we're kind of adding this almost vignette of lower quality to the outside edges. And that's gonna create this effect where the center is a little bit stronger. It has a better picture than the outside. I like to also do this with the blur. So if we grab the, what is it? The Gaussian blur right here and do the same thing. Control CV, Command CV. Um, we can then do the exact same thing. We click on the mask here, we invert it, and we can copy these numbers to make sure that they're exactly the same. So 441 and then 501. And then now we can add a little bit of a blur to that, the outside edge as well. So if you see really intensely, this is what we're doing. We don't need to go that intense at all. We just wanna add a little additional blur to that outside edge, maybe at near the 10 range. And then now what we've created is this additional sort of feeling where the center is a lot clearer and a lot better and the outside edges have some performance problems. And that is basically the effect here. This is a great effect if you're trying to simulate old footage like an old commercial or an old at-home video or even in a music video can work out really well. So this is a fun effect you can do and with it being on an adjustment layer, you could have multiple clips in here that it'll apply to and look good on. It's a very, very fun effect. So. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button to see more of videos like this and more fun with Adobe products. Until next time, everyone, see ya.